fundamental building block is a substantial amount of operating cash flow that we are generating from our copper tailings reprocessing operation in Chile. Well, hello to viewers tuning in to Assay TV. I'm delighted to be catching up with Amerigo Resources again, a leading copper producer with assets in South America. And I'm catching up with Aurora Davidson, president and CEO of the company. Aurora, it's great to be speaking with you again. Thank you for having us here. I'm glad to be back with an update on our company's uh, developments in the last uh, in the last months. Yeah, certainly. Well, look, you finished last year since last we spoke um, on an excellent trajectory. Um, can we just go over some of the highlights of how you concluded that year uh, and the financings there? That would be great to start with. Uh, to begin with your financial results for 2021 yes absolutely well i think that since we spoke um if i recall was it was back in october um we we've had a number of uh, of milestone events at the company we announced a normal course issue bid to retire uh 10.75 million shares we have record financial results as you mentioned uh we have also done an increase in our quarterly dividend payout we have a, an annual top-up dividend uh, to flow the excess cash on the balance sheet to just shareholders. And we've already reported strong uh, Q1 production numbers. So, um, you know, all of these events uh, essentially tie together, but the fundamental building block is a substantial amount of operating cash flow that we are generating from our copper tailings reprocessing operation in Chile. We have a stable operation with low execution risk, which works uh, very synergistically with high copper prices. Uh, right now, when we're doing this interview, the single most significant results, uh, financial results that we have, as you mentioned, were uh, the 2021 financial results. So I'm mm -hmm. gonna speak a little bit about those. And just as a reminder, uh, all of the dollar figures that I use in this discussion are US dollars. So in 2021, we produced uh, 63.4 million pounds of copper at an average copper price of $4.25 per pound. This resulted in net income of $39.8 million, earnings per share of 22 cents, and free cash flow to equity of $57 million. This is a very important metric that we're starting to use in telling our story because essentially what it means, Adam, is that after meeting Amerigo's low capex requirements and taking care of our debt obligations, our company had $57 million potentially available for distribution to the equity holders, the shareholders uh, of the company. In light of the strong results uh, and the board of directors view that returning capital to shareholders is a key corporate goal, the company has put in place, as you know, various share buyback programs and has a unique dividend policy in place. This started in 2021 and is continuing into 2022. For this year, we have set up challenging production and cost targets, which we are meeting. We announced our Q1 production results of 16.5 million pounds of copper at an average copper price of $4.64 per pound. And we met our guided cash cost of $1.90 per pound. So we have started the year again with solid operational footing under very auspicious copper price conditions. It's fantastic news for shareholders indeed. And these are some uh, great um, progress that you start the year with. Um, let's focus in on the top up dividend a little bit. We should perhaps spend some time in focusing the metrics of that, how that works and what led the company to initiate this kind of mechanism yeah, that's that's uh, that's a good a good continuation of the discussion. So dividends are a fundamental structural way of returning capital to shareholders. One of the key objectives that Amerigo has uh, is that we want to achieve uh, a dividend policy on the form of a sustainable quarterly dividend that shareholders can rely on. We do not want the quarterly sustainable dividend to go up and down from one quarter to the next. What we want is to have a floor that can be sustained and which only grows in the measure that it can continue to be sustainable. So that's, that's an important building block. However, that may lead from time to time or from copper price to copper price 
to the company ending up with more cash on hand than is needed for working capital purposes to run the company. So the concept of the top up dividend is essentially an additional dividend that can be declared and paid from time to time to distribute surplus cash flows to shareholders in a flexible way. The board of directors will make this determination, will ascertain, well, what is the amount of cash uh, that we need to keep as working capital, 20 million, 25 million. It will depend from time to time, but we think that that is a reasonable figure to work with. And by having a, a sustainable, reliable quarterly dividend and the flexibility of a top up dividend to distribute surplus cash, we now have in place a very attractive dividend policy. And I would like uh, to even think that it's one of its kind in the universe of mid-sized uh, copper producers. Yeah, certainly very unique indeed. Uh, let's focus just a little bit more about your excellent production so far this year. As you mentioned, you've exceeded uh, your target guidance. Um, is that that you've raced ahead and that it's going to change the guidance for the rest of the year? Are you simply on the trajectory and the path that you expected? Is this cost wave the, an inflation that's sort of hitting the rest of the uh, junior mining companies um, in, in the industry, something that you're factoring in now? Uh, talk us through the dynamics. Yeah, well, we, we basically um, met our guidance for Q1. Uh, we have uh, an annual guidance. We're not providing quarterly guidance. And we are on track to, to meet that guidance, both in terms of copper production and cash costs. When you're talking about inflation, we anticipated high inflation this year and we factored that into the metrics of our cash cost guidance. Uh, the, the known cost, the significant cost for us um, uh, are, you know, we know what they're going to be this year. They are power, steel, um, uh, lime, um, uh, TCRCs, uh, smelting and refinery charges. Those are set. Those are not going to be changing uh, significantly in the year. And the costs that are still subject to inflation are local costs in Chile, such as labor and maintenance. Um, and, and those are being, um, uh, there's, there's a bit of a natural hedge with the exchange rate dynamics of the Chilean peso to the US dollar. So we are not seeing any significant variance right now as we go into the fourth month of the year between our guided cash cost and what we're seeing in reality. Um, I think that's, uh, that's, that's quite a significant piece of information uh, in this, in this times of high inflationary pressures. Yeah, absolutely. Very good. Okay. Let's focus on some of the more topical issues surrounding Chile and then where your assets are and where you're operating. Obviously, two prevalent themes are water, uh, water rights, water consumption. It's a challenge for mining globally, but that that is pertinent in Chile. And then also the political situation. We've had a change of, a change of um, uh, ministerial leadership. Um, could you talk us through where Amerigo sits within these two key issues? Sure. And those are, as, as you mentioned, two key issues. Um, water uh, is significant. In the case of our particular operation at, at NBC, we're fortunate that our main source of water uh, is, is essentially the water that is contained in the fresh tailings that we receive uh, for processing at our plant. And this is a unique benefit of our operation. Uh, so in addition to this primary source of water, we have a series of water rights from adjacent natural water bodies, and we have a very efficient uh, industrial water recirculation system at our plant, of which the core functionality comes in from industrial water thickeners. We have been working in the last two years to revamp uh, our industrial water, water recovery system, and it's working uh, quite well. And of course, we can capture and store rainfall as uh, as, we, as we have at a on-site water dam storage. And this is very important because this has allowed us to store water um, in periods of, of higher of higher influx, of higher rain, uh, to ensure that we have reserves on site to supply any system shortages through the dry season in Chile. Uh, we have what's called, a, we call it our water matrix of sources and uses of water. 
And uh, we currently have in storage about four and a half million cubic meters of water, which is long, uh, uh, long enough of a reserve, uh, along with the ongoing sources and uses of water to maintain our processing targets for a period of at least 18 months. So we have this constant vision in front of us, uh, kind of a, a rolling forecast of our water usage uh, in order to identify uh, promptly uh, if we're following before uh, below that safety level, but that's not the case at the moment. Um, you also talked about politics and that's um, an interesting subject in, in Chile. Uh, uh, on March 11th, uh, Gabriel Boric was inaugurated as president of Chile. Uh, he's the youngest president that Chile has had. He's only 36 years old. And he was elected from a, le uh, a left uh, wing coalition, which initially created um, some um, uh, question marks in respect of what would be the next steps that he would take uh, in running Chile. However, after having won the elections uh, last year, what we have seen is that this government, and even before taking power, has um, moved away from some of the more, um, um, I wouldn't call them radical, but from, from some of the more liberal policies that they had in place in order to uh, move to the center ground of, of, of politics. And, and that's important because Chile is the most solid uh, democracy and economy in Latin America and has been in recent decades. And the new government is taking the necessary steps to ensure that their ambitious goals uh, which include revamping public education, revamping uh, the public health care system, uh, strengthening the pension system in Chile. All of those uh, um, uh, objectives are going to require additional funding uh, via taxes. And I think that the business sector in general sees that it is more probable than not that higher taxation rates may be enacted. But to the extent that these changes are done, in a reasonable way, uh, taking into consideration metrics, for example, of, uh, of gross profit instead of just metrics of, uh, of, of, of sales uh, as some um, proponents of changes to the mining royalty taxes were thinking of, you know, all of those changes can be, um, uh, can be focused and can be um, implemented without uh, creating significant noise if, if all the necessary uh, steps are, are taken. So the government is acting um, in, in, in a measured and responsible and mature way. That is that is very, very good news. Now, at the same time, uh, Chile is undergoing a process uh, where a new constitution is being drafted. And this process is creating an additional layer of observation and potential uncertainty at the time. Now, the project of the new constitution is not set in stone. Uh, a new document has has to be drafted, and then it has to be proposed um, to the uh, to the country at large, uh, and they will have to vote. It's a mandatory vote. It's not an optional vote whether I want to go and and cast it or not. Everybody is going to have the legal obligation of determining whether they want uh, the new constitution or not. Now, the the, the interesting part about it, uh, from my point of view is that Chileans are prudent people, conservative people, intelligent, rational people. So mm -hmm. if the constitution that is being proposed aligns to these principles, it may be voted on. But if it is a wild card that contains uh, items of, um, of high uncertainty, I think that it, it has a high probability of being rejected. So just to wrap up on the subject of politics, um, uh, Chilean politics are perhaps more civilized than what we see uh, on a day-to-day -day basis in North America, at least in recent years. So taxes may increase. Uh, we do not expect irrational changes to the taxation system. And at the end of the day, a nonsensical constitution would most likely be rejected by the Chilean people. So yeah, there, there is flux, but I think it's all within um, a measure of, of managed risk, and uh, and it's not a, a significant pointer of of, of, uh, of uncertainty in respect of of Chile. Yeah, absolutely. And important investors are sort of cognizant of that rather than sort of grabbing at headlines or sensationalism, perhaps. Absolutely. Okay. Excellent. Well, let's talk about the rest of this year then. You know, the progress has been great so far, as you mentioned. Uh, your first quarter results are 
are, are wonderful and you're doing good things for shareholders who must be happy. But uh, what should investors expect out of Amerigo uh, for the remainder of this year? And what catalysts are on the horizon to continue enhancing the business? Absolutely. Well, for 2022, the, the remaining months of the year, uh, the message is very simple. We will continue to be 100% focused on meeting our operational targets. Uh, we are bullish on copper. And when these two elements come together, they bode very well for the strengthening of our return of capital to shareholders through our regular dividends, an additional top-up dividend, and share buybacks. Uh, I think that's uh, the wrap-up message. Yep, certainly. Well, excellent. Very good news indeed. And we look forward to hearing a little bit more on Assay TV later in the year as things progress, both uh, geopolitically, but also more importantly with your projects. So thanks for speaking with Assay TV. Absolutely. Thank you much. Thank you so much for having us here again. Thank you.